Let's get to the big stories we're bringing you from BNN Bloomberg today. After the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, investors are looking out for other lenders that could be in trouble. Shares in First Republic Bank down sharply after the San Francisco-based bank says it has received additional liquidity from the Federal Reserve and JP Morgan Chase. The bank says the move raise, raises its unused liquidity to $70 billion dollars US and the bank's founder and CEO says First Republic's capital and liquidity remain well above regulatory thresholds. One of the stocks also getting caught up in the turmoil, Charles Schwab. Um, shares in that American financial services firm under pressure again today. That's despite the company releasing a statement designed to reassure investors. Schwab says it has access to an estimated $100 billion in cash flow, plus access to $300 billion in funds if needed. The pressure is also affecting TD Bank, which owns nearly 10% of Schwab. Shares in Pfizer moving higher after the pharmaceutical company announced that it's buying cancer drug maker CGEN for $43 billion US. Under the terms of the acquisition, Pfizer will pay $229 a share in cash. The deal comes as Pfizer looks to get back into mainstream pharma and is the biggest takeover so far this year. And here's a look at the markets. You can see the TSX under pressure. We have seen some selling in banking shares today, and that's always going to weigh on our market. Let's have a look, though, at U.S. equities because they have turned positive after selling earlier. At one point today, the S&P 500 was in danger of going into negative territory for the year. It's now up about 1.4%. Uh, the TSX is up about 1.5%. Let's get more perspective on these jitters in the banking sector from Robert Posen, senior lecturer, MIT Sloan School of Management, and former chairman of the SEC's Advisory Committee on Financial Reporting. Uh, he's also former chairman of MFF's Investment and Fidelity. Robert, thanks very much for joining us today. Glad to be with you. Tell us what's distinctive about this Silicon Valley bank failure. Have we ever seen a, a significant bank um, collapse like this before for the same reasons? Well, this is a very different situation than we had in 2008, where we had credit default. Here, the bank is holding uh, what we call money good treasuries. So it's just the mismatch between it. It had this huge influx of deposits in 2021 and 22. And in order to make a positive spread, it bought long-term treasuries. And that mismatch is what brought it down. So it's a liquidity crisis. And we've seen liquidity crises before, but usually uh, they're based in part on people's concern about whether the securities uh, are gonna be pay out in full. Here, that's not a question. So this is an unusual case because it's a pure mismatch case. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think what the Fed has done should calm uh, depositors a lot in saying that it's going to back uninsured depositors of these two banks, uh, uh, as well as insured depositors. And second of all, it's giving one-year loans and it's allowing the collateral for those loans to be treasuries at par value, not at their fair market value. So even though they've declined a lot in, if you tried to sell them, uh, the Fed is allowing you to have collateral at face value. So that, those are two really important uh, regulatory actions. Are, are these breaks in any way from previous Fed policies? 
Well, in in terms of protecting uninsured depositors, that's generally been the case. We've generally done uninsured depositors. I think this case is unusual because 80 to 90 percent of the deposits at uh, SVC are uninsured. So we rarely see such a, a large percentage of uninsured. Uh, in terms of the Fed taking collateral at uh, at uh, face value, well, that is unusual. Usually, uh, uh, they they have more of a market orientation. So that that's part of the Fed's uh, uh, attempt to head off a liquidity crisis in other regional banks. Uh, it's giving them new sources of liquidity without having to sell these treasuries at a loss. Um, the Signature Bank of New York, the other bank um, that's failing, can you give us any detail on what went wrong there? Well, again, it was a, it was a case where uh, they had a pretty concentrated uh, uh, depositor base, uh, which was very fickle because they were heavily uh, into venture capital and crypto. And uh, they, they had those deposits not in 60-day treasuries or six-month treasuries, but they had them in five-year or 10-year treasuries. And that's, that's, again, just a mismatch situation. Um, is there any question of other regional banks having made a similar mistake with a mismatch of assets? Well, I'm, I'm sure there are other regional banks that have uh, matched uh, their deposits against longer term treasuries. Now, some of them have hedged that bet, so that would have less exposure. And also, many of them don't have the same sort of fickle deposit base that SVC had. Uh, they don't have such a highly concentrated deposit base, mm -hmm. and they also have uh, uh, a less, uh, less, uh, a lower, much lower percentage of uninsured depositors. But as you can see from the stock market, First Republic is taking a big hit, even though it has a very different sort of deposit base, high net worth investors, and it's not holding treasuries, it's holding uh, California mortgages and other mortgages, jumbo mortgages of high net worth people. And those mortgages, uh, have not declined the way treasuries have. So First Republic is under a lot of pressure, but it's unclear whether uh, they'll be able to withstand it. They have a lot of liquidity. Uh, they've reached for more liquidity with JP Morgan. I'm sure they'll use the Fed's facility. And the fact that uh, the regulators said they'll back on insured depositors mm -hmm. should calm their base so that people won't be running away. So, I mean, there is widespread panic, but it's unclear to me whether these other regional banks mm -hmm. are really in the same situation as SVC. They're clearly not in the sense they haven't had this huge influx of uninsured depositors who are very concentrated. And second of all, uh, the regulators hadn't announced that they were going to protect uninsured depositors. Mm -hmm. So I think those are two factors that should help them a lot, uh, the regional, the other regional banks. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Robert. Yeah, I think the real okay, well, well, you finish question your thoughts, is, finish your thoughts, and then we'll have to go. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, I think the real question is who is going to get take losses here. The shareholders of mm -hmm. SVB are are taking losses. Uh, some of the commercial paper uh, will take losses, mm -hmm. and the executives. And I think it's really important for somebody to take losses here. Otherwise, we're back to the sort of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a moral uh, hazard, moral